This is a quick overview on how to keep a scientific notebook. The notebook is supposed to be the what, how, and why of the work you are doing. It must be reproducible, otherwise it is of no use. In scientific research, the lab notebook is often considered a legal document. Therefore, it is important to start good habits that will make your notebook as efficient and accurate as possible. This video is just a general guideline, and you should always follow the instructions outlined in your course manual for any other requirements. The book must be hardcovered, permanently bound, not spiral or loose leaf. No pages should be missing. You can reuse notebooks from previous courses. In that case, do not staple or rip out pages, but continue the page numbers and table of contents. On the cover, your name, course code, and practical number. Never put your student number on your notebook. Use permanent ink. Legally, it must be blue or black ink. Leave two blank pages at the beginning of your notebook so you can create a table of contents. This should include the title, page numbers, and the dates. Pages should be numbered from beginning to end of the book in increasing value. Do not use page number one when you start a new experiment. The reader will be able to find it based on the table of contents. Date every page. If you're finishing an experiment at a later time, the new date would reflect that. I made an error. So I drew only a single line through all errors written, so they can still be seen. This is proof to auditors that you are not hiding anything. Before you come to the lab, you must have prepared your notebook. I have my title, date, page number, and now I will go over what information goes on the right page and the left page. On the left-hand page, you need an experiment outline. This is your plan for the day. It is a summarized procedure written in point form, or better yet, a flowchart. You will refer to this section as you perform the experiment rather than trying to read through your lab manual. You will need a chart of hazards for every chemical you will be using or making in this experiment. This is called the SDS, the Safety Data Sheet Information. The chemical, health hazards, first aid precautions, fire hazards are all included and whether is it an oxidizing or reducing agent or flammable. All this information can be found in the chemical safety data sheets found online that are specific for each chemical. Your manual will have more information on this. Every compound requires it and it can be typed and glued or taped into your notebook or handwritten as in this case. Always state your reference, in this case sigmaaldridge.com. On the right hand side I have my page number, date, full title, and purpose. This is what am I trying to do? A bit of background theory is important as well. In this case, I am using Beer's Law and using a spectrophotometer. This section does not have to be long. It is important to include a physical properties table before you come to the lab. I forgot to do it when I prepared my notebook for this example and have stated where I have written it. It should be originally on the right-hand page. It lists the compound name, and the formula is ideal, the molecular weight, the description, the solubility, boiling point, flash point, and melting point. If I am using pure liquids, I will need density and the refractive index if I am using that in the lab that day. On the right-hand side, this is the procedure. Record what you have done, not what your lab manual says. It is written in the lab as you do it. Try to keep up, because if you miss a step, it will be reflected in your procedure, and your TA may be able to help you save your experiment. It is important to write down what the chemical is, the appearance, the amount, and the concentration if it's a solution. If you are using unknowns in the lab, remember to write down your number or code. Not all the labs use the same unknowns. Continue the procedure and results on the next right page. Here we have the number of mils of stock solution, the calculated concentration, and the absorbance values measured. By the concentration, I have a star. This takes me down to how I calculated the concentrations. When doing a calculation, use symbols or words rather than numbers, and always show your units. This is the results, calculations, analysis, and graph section. In this case, I printed out my data on Excel with my standard curve graph. In this case, it is absorbance versus concentration, and I get my line equation and my R squared. This value represents how close my points are to the best fit line. It is best to glue or tape this into your notebook. 
All of this must be in your notebook first and then transferred or copied onto your report sheet. This is the conclusion or discussion section. Note the new date. State the results. Did you get the expected results? Name any sources of error and how it would have affected your experimental values. If there is a significant error, such as you spilled your sample, you must account for it in your procedure. In this example, the discussion or conclusion section is fairly short. Remember that different courses have different expectations when it comes to their discussion and conclusion sections, and it's important to consult the lab manual. In this case, I'm showing a flowchart for a series of tests, such as you will see in the inorganic chemistry course, Chem B31. So for this test, I have my plan, and directly opposite on the right-hand page, I have what was physically done in the lab with my observations. Pre-lab questions are answered on the left-hand page. In this case, it is asking you to calculate the mass of a compound required for a specific concentration and volume. Always show your units. For synthesis experiments, such as you will see in organic chemistry, you will need, of course, the page number, the date, the title, and now I show my reactants, reagents, and product. This is the reaction equation. I would have done my hazards table on the left page, as expected. Here I have my physical properties table, showing all the reagents being used. I could have typed it and glued it to the page. It is important to always include the product, as often students forget about this. Molecular weights, melting points, density, solubility, and appearance are important. Is there something missing from this table? What I have missed is boiling points and flash points. These must be shown for all liquids. The flash point is the lowest temperature at which enough liquid will evaporate to form a combustible gas. For ethanol, the boiling point is 78.3 degrees Celsius. The flash point is 16.6 .6 degrees Celsius. This could cause a danger in the lab if there is a spark so it is very important to know. When doing a synthesis, I must do a theoretical yield calculation. This is how much product I am expecting if the reaction was 100% successful. I have my equation, and underneath I have my values. Mills, density, grams, molecular weight, and moles. The starting material is a solid, so I don't need mills or density. I can go directly to the number of grams. The acetic anhydride, it is a liquid, so I need mills density to calculate the number of grams and continue to moles. Because it is a one-to-one -one reaction, this is a limiting number of moles. So this is the number of moles of product I can get. I know the molecular weight, so I can calculate the theoretical yield, and I put a box around it to make it obvious. At the end of each lab, ask yourself, can I, or my peer, recreate this experiment or my results with what I have written down. It takes time to prepare a good notebook and hence should not be done the night before. If you don't understand something, please go to your instructor or the ChemAid Center to get the answers. It will make your lab experience much more positive and even fun.